My name is Denis Rudenia. I'm coming from the company called uh, InfoBib. Uh, I'm a software developer uh, at that company, and at the same time, I'm a soft skill trainer for the last uh, 10 years. Uh, started uh, as a member of one big, great family called Eastec. How many of you knows for Eastec? I see many hands. Eastec rocks. Um, and today, obviously, we're going to talk about the meetings. But to be honest, I mean, What's there to talk about the meetings? People come, people sit, people talk, and that's it, right? There is not and so much to, things to talk about when it comes to the meetings. It's the same when we say to ourselves or to someone else, I'm going to lose my weight starting from tomorrow or starting from next week. How are you going to do that? I'm going to start eating vegetables. Okay, that's true. Vegetables will help you to lose some weight. But apart from that, there is this another side of the, of, the, of the truth. You can't just start eating vegetables plus every, everything else that you have been eating till now. Candies, uh, beef and lambs if you're living in Bosnia and so on and so on. So you, you, you need to do some other, part, uh, other, other stuff. You have to look on the other side of the story. Start, uh, stop eating candies, uh, start, uh, start doing some sport activities and so on and so on. It's the same thing with the meetings. It is true that people come to the meeting, they sit, they talk, and they try to you know, make, make some kind of agreement. This is true. But the same with losing your weights, there is another part of the truth that we, in the first moment, we don't think about it when it comes to the meetings, but we definitely should. So, from this moment, we are looking a little bit different uh, on the meeting, so it's just not—it's not just coming to the meeting, sitting and talking. So now we are aware that there are some other parts of uh, the parts that we need to and we need to pay attention to the other part of the truth, and this is what is going to be a focus today, talking about this other part of the truth when it comes to the meetings. Obviously, we cannot focus and talk about the whole truth, the whole, the whole other part of the truth, uh, because we have only 45 minutes and we don't want to take some time from the lunch. So today's focus is going to be not how to put a brilliant idea into people's people mind, but how, uh, how to pull out the brilliant idea if the participant of your meeting has some kind of the, the, the brilliant idea that he or she can propose to you. As I said, uh, I'm coming uh, from the company called uh, InfoBip, one of the sponsors of uh, today's uh, event. And obviously, we had, a, we had a problem, or sorry, there are HRs here, we had a challenge. But <laughs> no, I mean, I, 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 to be really honest, we need to call this with the real name. It was a problem. Why it was a problem, or in other words, what was our challenge? Our challenge was that first thing, we had really weak outcomes. We have uh, around 1,000 people uh, working in our company. Uh, we are not just software company. We have uh, sales uh, members. We have people who are working with operators. We have people in the marketing, in the legal department. We, of course, have a lot of developers, and so on, and so on, and so on. So when we talk about the meetings today, we are talking about the whole company. And from that perspective, one of our challenges was that we, we had a lot of meetings but most of them had really, really weak outcomes. So this was the first challenge that we faced and that we wanted to you know, find a solution how to improve this. The second challenge was wasting time. Seriously, how many of you have been participating on some meeting and in the end of that meeting you said to yourself, this was totally a waste of time? How many of you? Congratulations to the other guys. You, you're really lucky. <laughs> ah, doesn't matter. Uh, the thing is, this is, this, this is something that it's not just uh, part of our company. It's happened in every company, in every team. It's absolutely something that is affecting all of us. And we need to be honest to ourselves if we want to solve this issue. The, another uh, challenge for us was that there was either no follow-up or very weak follow-up. But to be more uh, precise, let's say that for our challenge, our starting point was like, let's say we didn't have follow up at all and look this as a problem, as a further solution. Okay, so the first thing what we did, 
obviously we were not smart to in, uh, reinvent the wheel. Well, the first uh, step, uh, what we did is that we contacted a lot of different companies, a lot of different teams, because you know we we are all friends. We work in different companies, different uh, cities, different countries. How so? Uh, however. Uh, we are talking with each other and sharing the, the knowledge and experience with each, other, with, with each other. And this is what happened with us. We talked with our friends and our colleagues in many, many different companies all around the world. Some of them are working for like top, top companies. And they had the same problem. Uh, what we analyzed is that uh, some of them in different companies had different kind of approaches. And some of those approaches have been proven or at at that point, when we were analyzing, uh, those approaches kind of gave us uh, some hope that they might be successful if we implement these approaches in our company. So what we did, we said, okay, so for the sake, for the whole company, we're going to uh, define the three models. Three models, not as a strict rule. I will repeat this, not as a strict rule, more like a guideline, like a framework where you can take some things or most of them or all of them and apply to your uh, to your meetings no matter in which team you are okay so the three models that we uh, defined was were called storm norm and perform obviously you heard for these names they are coming from uh, Bruce Tuckman's uh, models why taking these names instead of uh, grooming planning and reviewing because uh, we are not applying these models only to development teams, but to all other teams in our company. So to make them more close to, to, uh, to the nature of their work, we took uh, these uh, names because they're uh, mostly familiar to everyone uh, on this world. Okay, so what is the STORM uh, model? The STORM model is a model where when we have a meeting from, uh, from which we want to get as an outcome a lot of different ideas. The norm model is a meeting where we already have a lot of ideas, but we need to agree which idea we're going to implement. And the perform model is the model where we already agreed, where we already have a lot of ideas. We know what we're going to do. We started working, but we need to see where we are with our tasks and what we're going to do. OK, so let's see from uh, model to model what, what we need to pay attention uh, when it comes to implementation or applying these uh, models to our daily meetings. Okay, the first uh, model is the storm. The first thing that we need to do is to send the introduction email. Uh, this is easy, right? And mostly very familiar to all of us. But what to put in this email? That's the question. The first thing that we need to do is to put a short info about the topic that we're going to talk about. Why? This sounds very easy, but it is very very challenging uh, uh, step. Why is it challenging? Does someone of you may guess? Why is it challenging? Why is it challenging to write a, a short email? Exactly. You need to go to the straight point. When, you, when you're discussing about something, you don't know so much about that thing. That's why you're discussing. That's why you're brainstorming, right? And sending a long email is not an option. What, what are you doing with the long emails? Nobody's going to read it. Exactly. So the big story, the big introduction, you need to make small. So it's a challenge, right? But why we are doing it? What if I ask you, how are you going to make a cake in five, seconds, in five minutes? What are you going to say to me? Probably nothing. But most of you, most of you have idea and may come to the idea how to make a cake in five minutes. The thing is, in this, in this case, I didn't give you a time to think about it. I called you to, uh, to a meeting and I said, today we're going to talk about making a cake in five minutes. So while I'm presenting or introducing you a topic, you're starting to think about how to do it and you're doing it under pressure. And the best ideas didn't come under pressure. The best ideas came as a logical development in our head where we give people a time to think about the idea and once they think about the idea they are asking themselves is this idea so good what if i come in front of the people and say we need to uh, 
I don't know, do something with the cake and everyone starts to laugh. So they are questioning themselves and making sure that their idea is the best idea in the world. And once they come to the meeting with this idea, they are sure, no matter what kind of the argument you have against them, they have strong argument why making a cake in five minutes according to their idea is the best. And what do you get from that? What do you get from that? You get the outcome that you wanted from the, from the beginning. You wanted a brilliant idea, and this is what you get. Now, once again, sending an uh, introduction about the topic should not be big. It should be three sentences maximum, but it should go to the point. What we are tackling, what we want to discuss about, and what do we need, what do we expect as the final outcome of our brainstorming session. <coughs> Okay, so this is the first thing. The second thing that this uh, email or any other type of, of, of informing the people about this meeting should contain is which people are expected to talk. Now, this might sound a little bit strange, right? Why we should call, if we are calling 10 people or 20 or three, five, doesn't matter how many, why should, I mean, if, they, if we are calling them, it's kind of we are expecting from them to talk. But are they gonna talk? If you call 10 people from here to discuss about making a cake, do you really believe that 10 people from this side are gonna really, really be brave and talk about the cake? Probably not. There might be someone, like this uh, trip guy, like dominating guy from the video, he always has this idea, even though it's the worst idea in the world, he always has this. This might happen, but it, most probably it will not happen. So, by putting the name of the people from who you expect to talk, you're ba basically putting a kind of a social pressure on the person. You're telling him, listen man, you're coming to this meeting and I expect from you to say something about this topic. So you better come prepared because you will have your one minute or two minutes or ten minutes or whatsoever. And when you know that you're gonna stand in front of the people or sitting in front of the people and that you're gonna talk, no matter how much you like or you don't like this topic, you're not gonna allow yourself to be ashamed in front of the people. So you're gonna think about the idea, even though if you're gonna propose the worst idea, you will still bring the idea to the meeting. And what was our challenge? The outcome. Not a quiet person sitting in on the meeting, but the idea. Why? Maybe his idea or his or his or hers is the worst on the world. But these four ideas that are worst in the world will bring one brilliant idea that, that he came to during the meeting because he got the inputs from these people in the meeting and he came to the idea. Why? Because they were not quiet. They were talking. And this is what we want to gain from the meeting. Okay, so this is what we do before the meeting. Short intro, going straight to the topic and talking what do we expect from the meeting and from who we actually uh, specially expect that they are going to talk. <clears throat> The second thing is obviously the leading the meeting. Now, what should we pay attention when it comes to the leading the meeting? What do you think? We are leading the brainstorming session. What should we pay attention to? Any idea? What? Okay, focus on the topic. That's one of the things. What else? What? Exactly, so if we have someone dominating to give a chance to, to quiet people to talk, that's a very good point. What else? Exactly, we are brainstorming. We are, our goal is to get millions of ideas how to make a cake in five minutes, not to decide which cake is the best or which methodology is the best or whatsoever. Great, great point. What else? We don't judge. Okay, so obviously we need to pay attention to a lot of things, but some of them, with due to respect to all other things, let's say at, at, at this point are a little bit more important than, than many other things that we generally need to pay attention when it comes to the meeting. So the first thing is to start, why do we have this meeting? Why do we do this? How many meetings do you have? In, uh, during your work, during your work day, during your work week, during your uh, work month? One? If yes, then 
we don't need this, because during that month, you're going to think about this meeting. But if you have several meetings per a day, or per a week, or per a month, you're going to lose in this context switching. Now I'm thinking about the cake, now I'm thinking about uh, developing the product, now I'm thinking about uh, how to paint the wall, and so on and so on. So the context switching in all of us is a kind of strange thing. We are not so much capable to do uh, very good context switching, and this is why we need to introduce the topic be before we actually start uh, uh, the meeting uh, itself. Now, why are we here? We are here to collect the ideas, not to bring the decision, not to judge, uh, not to do all other things that you were actually right when you were proposing it. Uh, the second thing is to allow the people to speak. There will be people who came, who did their homework, they came with the idea, they came with the output, give them a chance to show how they smart are. This is good, because those ideas, doesn't matter if they are good or not, will either be one of the possible uh, final conclusions, or they will tackle someone else's idea during the meeting. The uh, third thing is to engage the quiet people. Why? Why do we need to engage quiet people? If they want to talk, they will talk. Why should we engage them on the meeting? Why are you so quiet? <laughs> Why they are not confident? And what should we do with them? And why is it important for us to engage quiet people? Exactly. Maybe they have a brilliant idea, but they don't have confidence to express. This is one thing. And another thing, the more important, not for this meeting, but for the meetings that will come later on, when we're going to start deciding and when we're going to start actually working on some project, is that we want people to be connected with the proposal, the final proposal that we're going to agree with. How people get connected with the final proposal? Not by coming and say, this is the best idea and this is how we're going to work. They need to believe in that. How are they going to believe in that idea? They're going to believe if they participate in, in creating this idea from the beginning. And how they are participating from the beginning? By engaging them. No matter if they're going to say, I agree with this idea, or if they're going to say, uh, I have some silly idea how to make a cake, this is how I'm going to do, doesn't matter. We are not, as you said, we are not discussing about the quality of the, of the idea, we are not discussing about the final proposal, we want to engage people now, when, let's say, it's not so much important to the quality of the idea, because later on, when we're going to decide about the, the final idea, those people, because they were part of, of, of this, uh, uh, creating the pool of ideas, they're going to be connected with all ideas, and the final idea will be connected with them. <clears throat> and the last step, to have a place to write down the idea. Now, why, why we should, or we, sh we should at, at least try to have a big paper in front of the team where we're going to write the ideas. Why paper and not a table? Why paper and not PowerPoint? Why table comparing to any other uh, tool that uh, is available for us? What do you think? Have you been playing with Lego uh, 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 boxes when you were a kid? Do you like Lego boxes? What about the others? Do you like Lego boxes? You know, the small, the small boxes where you build some, some machines, robots, and so on and so on. What? That's one of the things. And it, it, the, the feeling that we had with these Lego boxes is that we were building something. We were creating something. It was in front of us. It was ours. It was not somewhere there on the table someone else. It was here in front of us, we are building it, and it's ours, and we are connected with it. It doesn't matter if the robot leg is our leg. The robot itself, it's ours, the, the whole team that is building the ideas. It's the same with the brainstorming. You are not bringing the final decision. That's why it is good to work on the emotions of the people, to make those ideas, those pool, connected with them, because later on, everything else will be way, way, way more easier. Okay, and the last thing is the follow-up email. Now, if you ask people, are you doing the follow-up? Of course, everyone is doing the follow-up. But in real life, not so many people are doing the follow-up. Why? 
Not enough time. Wasting of time and so on and so on. This is the painful truth. And it's the truth among all of us. Some of us are quiet and don't want to admit, but this is the truth of all of us. Now, what do we need to pay attention when it comes to the follow-up email? First of all, the follow-up email must contain the minutes of the meeting. Now, these minutes are not who said what. It can be in any form. The most important thing is that all ideas that we were discussing to be present there. Again, we are not bringing the final decision. We are just having all ideas on one place. What can be the minutes of our meeting? It can be an email, but can it be this paper where we were building the ideas? Yes, it can. So the form doesn't matter. What matters? The idea that we created together. The second thing is the task, possible list of the tasks that we're going to investigate more. So if we said we're going to try with some, I don't know, white chocolate cake, then we need to investigate if there are white chocolates here in Sarajevo, can we buy it, How, what is the price, and so on and so on. So some possible ideas came out from uh, one of the ideas during the brainstorming meeting. We need to assign this uh, task to uh, one person or a team who will go and check uh, additional info needed for bringing the final decision. Uh, the next thing is the deadline. If there is no deadline, then who knows when the people is going to uh, do the specific task that you're expecting from them. And the last thing is to do a check before the deadline. In, in Scrum, how do we call this check before the deadline? What do you think? What? Come on, come on, come on. Stand up, exactly. Now, the stand-up, if you look, at it's not, it's not a meeting. We might call it a meeting, we might not. But it is informal way to check where we are before we end with the sprint. It's the same with any other meeting. If you agree to do something, to check in Sarajevo, are there any white chocolates and how much they cost, do some informal checking, like in the morning while you're, while you're preparing the coffee. Like, uh, did you have a chance to check the chocolate? How is it going? It doesn't matter if the person did check or not. What is important? You made informal checking. You made informal social pressure. Like, I'm checking, so it's important to me. So I'm expecting from you to check before, uh, until the deadline that we gave during the meeting. Again, as a summarizing, the STORM model is a model when we need to pay attention how we introduce the topic, from who we expect to talk. During the meeting, we are engaging everyone. First, those who are motivated to talk, and then those who are quiet. Afterwards, we are doing a follow-up, gathering all ideas, assigning possible tasks, if there are, to the people, and doing informal check if they did or not are working on those tasks. The second model is called NOR model. What might be the norm model? We already mentioned possible review. So it kind of fits to, uh, sorry, uh, planning meeting. So it kind of fits to the planning meeting. Why? What kind of the meeting is the planning meeting or norm model? What do you think? Hmm? What? We know, do we know what to do? We have. We have, exactly, mostly. We have a lot of ideas, so we are going in the, in the right direction. So we are not going to waste our time thinking what might we do. We already have a pool of the ideas, what we should do, oh, exactly. So we did several groomings. We discussed about what we can do. Now what we need to do is to go to the backlog, the pool of the ideas, or pool of the tasks, and see out of those ideas what we should do and how we should do some things. Now, how we do this? The first thing is to send the agenda. You obviously not, if you have 45 minutes a meeting, you obviously not gonna talk about millions of the topics. And we are not capable to talk about a uh, million, million uh, points during the meeting. So we need to uh, specify which things we're gonna talk about so that people can prepare for the meeting. Okay, the second thing is the leading the meeting. What we should pay attention when it comes to the planning meeting and to the leading the planning meeting. What do you think? No ideas. So first thing, starting with explanation why we invited these people. Uh, on this meeting, if uh, the same team was participating in the brainstorming session and there were no additional people coming to the norm meeting, 
then this step might be uh, ignored. But if you have a new people join you on the meeting, it's kind of strange. We started building the cake, and for no reason, he showed up to our meeting. Like, who is he? What, what's his role? What's he going to do? So people are you know, putting the focus on the new people in the room instead of the, bringing the po best possible idea. So we are basically explaining why we invited these people, how they're going to help us with bringing the right decision, and so on and so on. Uh, the second thing is to decide who will take uh, meeting notes. We didn't have this in, during the brainstorming session, right? Because we had a paper in front of ourselves, and we were able to express and write down any of our ideas by ourselves. But here, when we are discussing about the best possible ideas, we need someone responsible to take uh, care of uh, conclusions that we're going to bring during the meeting. The third thing is meeting discussion. It has to be structured. It has to go point by point from the agenda. And after each point, you need to bring decision and in the end, assign tasks to the people. The task that is not assigned is no one's task. And it will for sure not be implemented by itself. So we need to pay attention to this. Uh, in the end, we are sending the follow-up email. And it's basically the same follow-up email like for the uh, brainstorming uh, session. And the third uh, model that we're going to talk today is so-called PERFORM model. Now, uh, what kind of uh, model is the PERFORM model? We mentioned that it kind of fits to the review meeting. So what should we pay attention when it comes to the review? What are we doing on review? Exactly. So it's kind of process checking where we are with what we plan to do. Uh, are, did we finish the tasks? Do we uh, postponing for, for some um, next period and so on and so on? Okay, so first thing, what do we do? We send the agenda. Again, for someone, it's wasting of time. But you're basically not wasting your time. You're investing that time in the preparation of the people that you're calling to your meeting. So basically, you're telling them, we're not going to talk about something. We're going to talk about this, 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 and this. So be prepared for it. The uh, second thing is the leading the meeting. How do we do this in the performing stage? We go again structured, point by point, from the agenda that we sent uh, before the meeting. And the third thing is, what do we do during the meeting? First, we update uh, what we did with tasks that were assigned to us in the previous period. The next point is define the possible next tasks that we're going to do and assign tasks to the people. And the last thing, Again, follow up the email. So to conclude, we are presenting here obviously not any new thing. And obviously, all of you heard or knew or used some of these things in your daily work. This is OK. And this is totally fine. What we need to pay attention here is that we are not wasting time with the preparation. We are not wasting time with a strong and structured facilita facilitation. And most of all, we are not wasting time with this post process with the follow up. We are investing in the outcomes, in the wasting of time, uh, people's time, and most of all in the people's motivation. Because people will not have a feeling that they came to the meeting, they talked so much, or they didn't talk at all. They were looking at their cell phones, or I don't know, looking to each other, smiling, crying, or so whatsoever. They will have a feeling that they were building something together. And in the end, they try to implement it. Maybe they succeed totally, maybe they succeed partially, but they were together and they have a feeling that together they built something. And this is more valued than anything else in the world. So remember, on your next thing, on your next meeting, the most important thing, apart from these points that we were uh, talking today, is to enjoy. Thank you. Okay, uh, we are officially done with the uh, with the presentation part. So I'm guessing that someone from Bosnia Agile will give you introduction to the regarding the lunch time. First, first we're gonna give you our thank.